Oh yeah, I wanted to start on something light, but we have something a, a little bit darker next, which is the UK riots. We'll try and keep it as light as possible, but you know. In most places last night, with a show of force by police and huge numbers of anti-racism protesters, the night passed without fears of yet more violence being realised. In the hours before, in Liverpool and dozens of other places, there have been warnings about possible disorder. Without knowing exactly why that didn't happen, it's hard to predict what will happen next. Earlier today, Cheshire police arrested a 55-year-old woman from near <coughs> Chester in relation to a social media post containing inaccurate information about the identity of the Southport attacker. Merseyside police were forced to... We still, like, we still haven't heard much about who the actual attacker was, have we? All we know is that it was, what, a 17-year-old kid with Rwandan parents but was born in Cardiff? And, like, we don't even know what the supposed motive was. ...statement that an incorrect identity of the suspect was being shared on social media. 17 years oh, old. Matt. Well, Matt, the Prime Minister said that there'll be no let-up in the police response to the disorder. And it's interesting politically that he chose to visit a mosque, particularly given Labour's relationship with some in the Muslim community over issues such as Gaza. A far-right gathering which forced the closure of shops and businesses. The first part. Such a dog whistle, isn't it? We're only against the illegal immigrants. Sure, mate. Sure. ...is safety and security of our communities. Anybody involving themselves in disorder, whatever they claim as their motive, will feel the full force of the law. It was a bit of a more of a wholesome video, actually, that I saw, which I came across. A guy talking about how he'd sort of invited some of the protesters in, gave them food and stuff, and then they started talking to each other. Yeah, see if you find that and uh, send it to me. We have disenfranchised communities as a whole. Certain classes within our society are feeling like they're... I mean, honestly, it just goes to show that, like, when some of these supposedly really far-right guys who supposedly hate Muslims, you literally realise that they've just never talked to a Muslim person throughout their entire life. So they've, they've built up these, like, prejudices around them based on, like, the Daily Mail and stuff. It can really sort of break so many insane barriers when you just literally talk to people. And that's what that video showed. That shooter in America as well, that guy Dylan Roof who shot up a Bible study church because he was like a massive racist. He basically said that he found it really hard to do because he had to go, go into the Bible study group and talk to them to be able to infiltrate it before he did his shooting. He basically said he had to psych himself up to do it. He had to psych up the hate again. When he talked to them, he kind of realized how human they were. Oh, wow, shit, these are people. Hundreds of young Muslims turned up, they said, to defend the mosque. But there was a concern things would escalate and Mr. Malik and others tried to get them to go home. One of the things I realized on that night I didn't have as much influence over those young people as I thought I had. And I have to recognise one's limitation. Yeah, that's a really ironic thing that these riots seem to do, is they seem to end up with some of these far-right guys just talking to the people in the mosques and sort of realising that they had much common ground. Well, clearly we need to find a way to get communities to integrate just day to day. Not when they're rioting. They're both working class. The Muslim people are also working class and they've been told to hate each other. Even in Leeds, where I live, there's certain areas where you have a huge mo Muslim population and then there's other areas. It seems to be mostly white. It still seems you know, kind of se segregated. How can you get these communities to integrate a little bit more? I don't know, but it needs to happen. We might sit there and say, I'm a community leader and I, everybody does what I say. It doesn't work like that. The younger people have their own understanding as I guess I would have had 30, 40 years ago. The Prime Minister said today it was the threat of prison and swift justice that stopped further riots. The police are now looking ahead to- Yeah, the really like ironic thing is there was a riot in Kirkstall that was started in one of the areas in Leeds which is uh, like Romanian and, and uh, Muslim population in it and obviously the reaction to that was oh well it's clearly because they don't belong in this country look at them these are animals we wouldn't act like that people were commenting that on, on like videos of, of the riot two weeks later we, we have the white working class people doing the exact same thing but much worse to threatened marches this weekend <laughs> But at the hub, they say they worry about the longer term. And I should point out, there was no political motive behind the Kirkstall riot anyway. It is the crisis and the interest goes away and then we go back into our own worlds and we start living separate lives again. Well, words won't compensate. You see, it has to be action. They say they'll be looking to the Prime Minister for that action in the weeks and months ahead. What's the cause? Capitalism, baby. The gap of wealth between the elites and the working class.
And the middle class has just got wider and wider. That's the reason there's no money to put into any local services for working class people anymore. As capitalism, late stage capitalism gets more and more advanced, they find more and more ways to avoid paying tax, continuously take, gets taken away from the working class. And then the working class are told that it's because they're just not worthy of that money and they don't understand that they've been coerced into a system where they're just paying rent every month while they're paying rent to a person who is getting that rent and then getting more money in the equity of that property and then they're investing that money and then that money is growing and they're getting richer and richer while they're getting poorer and poorer and they're getting their car on credit they're getting everything else on credit and then more and more and more debt all the time they they just see a person who came into the country they're like oh well obviously this is a zero-sum game and that whatever you get from this country is something i'm not getting from this country economics isn't a zero-sum game we're the people who are increasing the gdp of this country constantly but where's all that money going it's going straight to the top hey we have the video let's move on to the nigel farage thing shall we and then we'll finish it off with a wholesome thing um you began with a video in the immediate aftermath of the south Bort stabbings that engaged in conspiracy theories about who did this and about whether the police were telling the truth you said and i'm quoting here some reports suggest he the man charged was known to the security services are they going to show that video i saw that video of nigel farage saying that he made a video on how to stop the riots after he started them? <laughs> oh, fuck you. So the Prime Minister tonight reacting to what has happened over the course of the last 48 hours. His conclusion, very simple, it's all the far right. As if they're causing all of the problems. No, the far right are a reaction. I don't support street violence. I don't support thuggery in any way at all. But I'm worried not just about the events in Southport, but about societal decline that is happening in our country. Law and order, folks, on our streets is breaking down. On the streets of Hartlepool. There was a video on his channel where he was basically saying, I'm just asking questions, but it seems like this guy may have come across the channel on a little dinghy boat. Anyway, let's watch him uh, crumble. There were stories online uh, from some very prominent uh, folks with big followings, Andrew Tate, etc. Ah! <laughs> nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with with a source? Is Andrew Tate? <laughs> the English Channel in a boat in October 2023. Um, other suggestions that he was an active Muslim, um, and much of this. Did you say active Muslim? Suggestions that he was an active Muslim, um, and much of this. <laughs> what does he mean by? Active Muslim led to the riots that we saw. But you amplified that because you said some reports suggest. I asked a very simple question: Was this person known or not? Now to the security services. Absolutely, <laughs> and that's a perfectly legitimate. You did CrossFit, <laughs> CrossFit Muslim. A question Damn. which was raised well. by Yvette Cooper. But Nigel yes. Farage, you didn't just do that, did you? You said yes. some reports suggest he was known to the security services. <laughs> Those reports were from a fake news website. Yep. Amplified by Russian state TV and, as you mentioned, Andrew Tate. Which ones were you looking at? The London Bridge attacker. We knew within an hour. Oh, so his excuse is that he didn't have any real information. So he thought pushing misinformation was the way to go because he didn't have any clarification from the media. You know, the media that lies all the time. Yeah. You <laughs> said some reports suggest he was known to the security mm. services. Those reports were a fake news website, Russian state TV. Well, and I could have Tate. said, so I could have said, so which one I could have said, Nigel I could have said some reports suggest he crossed the channel last October. Some reports suggest. He's an and all of Muslim. that was unfair. I did none of those things. What I asked for was clarity. We didn't get clarity, and I would that. argue. What? I want to show you the original video, but he was just like sat there speculating and like just basically lying. Oh, but I'm just asking questions. I would argue. Oh, have you found it? Oh, it's on Facebook. Of, co of course, it's still on Facebook. Well, it's pretty horrendous. The third young girl has died as a result of the stabbings yesterday in Southport. I obviously join everybody in my horror at what has happened. I know the Prime Minister went to lay flowers and was heckled, and it shows you how unhappy the public are with the state of law and order in our country. I have to say there are one or two questions. Uh, was this guy being monitored by the security services? Some reports say he was, others less sure. The police say it's a non-terror incident. Just as they said the stabbing of an Army Lieutenant Colonel in uniform 
on the streets of Kent the other day was a non-terror incident. I just wonder whether the truth is being withheld from us. I don't know the answer to that, but I think it is a fair We're just asking question. questions. What I do know is something is going horribly wrong in our once beautiful country. Mm. Oh God, Hi. stop also playing. God, I hate Facebook so much. Anyway. It's being answered, which they were. So did you accidentally fall for that misinformation? No, I didn't believe any of it. Or did I you want... know it was wrong from the get go? I hadn't got a clue. So I why did you cite it? Because the people wanted to know the truth. And if they had known the truth, Tom, the riots would not have been of the same magnitude. But you're not just people. You are an elected representative mm. of the people in a position... Representing, representing in a, a question, position of authority. Representing a question that was being asked <laughs> by millions at the time, which regrettably did not get answered. I have never been involved in street protest. I have never been involved <laughs> in violence. Oh, guys, he's never done it himself, so it's OK. I have always been a thousand miles away. Well, from, literally, in this case, from think far right agitators, <laughs> from conspiracy. It was okay because I was in Australia at the time. Theorists, I've always been as far away from those people <laughs> as I can possibly be. Well, you had you had some in UKIP, which I think is one of the reasons where you left UKIP. Uh, UKIP. Paul Waters. Well, Andrew actually, Waters. well, actually, Paul? I left UKIP after twenty five years. So back to what you said. I left said. UKIP after twenty five years because. The leadership at the time encouraged Tommy Robinson to be a part of it. I so did more. To what you I said. did more to get rid of the BMP as a political force in you, Britain than anybody else in the country. You amplified this misinformation. No, 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 Tom, no you did. You were getting this you wrong. Said some I said, suggest. "Give us clarity." You didn't just say that, though, Nigel. I did. You also said the internet was awash with all sorts of theories, all of which proved mm. to be unfounded. Yes, but that's what led to the riots in Southport. But you indulged in those theories. By the way, that by the, to be by the way, I've still not been told whether this person was on a list or not. I don't no, know the answer no to that. One do you? No, I don't know. But this, do so that's why we, it's a legitimate question. Do you question. think we deserve to know? I, absolutely. I Thank think you. the police need so, to give so, us the so answer. So my question is still valid. Your question is valid, but not in the way that you put it, because you know what you're doing. Why did you so say the truth about Southport is being well, withheld you from you tell us? me whether this man was on, the, was on the suspect list or not. You don't know the answer to no. it. Don't we deserve to know it? But that's not to say... Also, this supposed man is a 17-year-old kid. It's a boy. I don't believe we're being told the full truth yet about this person. I want to know. I think we all so want to know. So the police are lying. Maybe they're lying to not, you. Not, not telling the truth is not the same as lying. The truth about Southport was being yeah. withheld from us. Do you still think the truth is being withheld I as, gave a, the police as a the way to say the police are not I gave the police the, the opportunity to dampen down speculation. They should have done it. And I bet they regret not doing it. Do you want to retract the comments and delete that video? No, I want to know the truth. You don't, you don't. Oh, he did. Unless he never had it on YouTube. Is he like more of a Facebook guy? It, it wouldn't surprise me. Oh God, a London bus is the cover photo. Nigel's back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, has he got like a cigar? Literally taking pages out of Andrew Tate's book. This man should be arrested. What is he saying? They are disgusting, nothing oh, back no, no. And we need to call their friends and get rid I mean, yeah. He's calling for violence there, to be fair. That man was arrested. Concerned about crime and immigration has shut up. Yeah, I've seen this graph. Oh, he went on trigonometry? Oh, no. <laughs> that fucking podcast. The idea that there's two-tier policing mm -hmm. is now widespread in society. By the way, Farage, after we left the EU and did all of the Brexit stuff that he wanted us to do for ages, he like left UKIP and he went into the background for some time. And what he did during that time, nobody really talks about this, but he was essentially like running this sort of get rich quick scheme. I'm not saying it was like a scam, but I... <laughs> I just got really scammy vibes off it. Obviously it didn't do him very, very well because he's gone back into politics. Okay, editing Moon here, just popping in. Um, I got curious, so I had to look this up. So basically, Nigel set up a free newsletter called Fortune and Freedom, uh, which supposedly offered the type of financial advice rich people get, but you know, for the average man. It appears to just sort of consist of him talking shit about actual regulated financial advisors for being, you know, part of the system that's 
keeping you down, bro. And from the outset, it just looks like a free newsletter, which sort of makes money from advertise. But basically the kinds of stocks that the newsletter advises that you invest in are like highly speculative, like gold, which is not recommended generally by financial advisors because it's not a profitable business, it's just a commodity. And of course they tell you to invest in crypto, which is obviously a very, very highly risky speculative asset, which you are very likely to lose money on. Also true to brand, he speculates that the euro is going to crash. So he basically advises that you trade Forex against the euro, but trading currency, especially if you're just doing it on the side as a hobby, as these subscribers to this newsletter are likely to be, it's very much advised against by actual normal regulated financial advisors. I do not recommend you do Forex as a hobby. <laughs> you will lose money. Not financial advice. Is it still financial advice? Do I still have to say this is not financial advice, even though I'm telling people not to do anything? Just don't trade. Is that financial advice? Don't trade. <laughs> But anyway, on top of all of this, Nigel isn't even a financial advisor himself. He never has been. Before he went into politics, he, he worked as a commodities trader on the London Metal Exchange. So you could say he's got some experience trading gold, but he's not a financial advisor. He's working with them, but he's not one himself. So this isn't even his area of expertise. And of course, if you lose any money when taking actions based on this newsletter, you can't actually take any action against them because they're not regulated by the FCA. It's just... A newsletter. Cool! But basically the way that it works is that they'll promote courses like directly from the newsletter such as this one called Crypto Profits Extreme. But they also used to do uh, YouTube ads where basically if you clicked through this YouTube ad it would take you to like an hour-long pitch video of Nigel Farage talking about financial freedom and he'd offer you a fully refundable trial, like a course, like an investment course for £99, which was supposedly fully refundable if you didn't like it. And then they'd use that to upsell people to another sort of inner circle course, which costs £2,500. And they basically make it seem like you'd get one-on-one -on -one advice with Nigel Farage and friends if you signed up for this inner circle. But according to the Trustpilot reviews, that's actually never happened. So basically they're generally misleading customers and it's all giving a very scammy vibe. So I was correct, basically. And anyway, how is this business doing now? Well, uh, yeah, not, not so great it seems. So uh, yeah, back to uh, politics and stoking race riots it was. He basically did a and then went back to politics. The idea that the police should <laughs> randomly stop and search people mm -hmm. for knives in the streets is is it, extraordinarily popular whenever I say it. You and have yet, said and yet, that in Hare Hills in Leeds, and yet, police ran away and allowed a riot. Is that two-tier policing? Um, I think if you look at the way the police dealt oh, with the Hare Hills sake. protests oh. and dealt with the Southport protests, I think any fair-minded person would think there were two different police reactions. What I mean, the because fuck? Aren't they because two different incidents? They're two different types uh, of protests. Uh, well, yeah, but they're both violent. They both set... What were they protesting against the first one? That was not organised in any sense of the word, that Hare Hills protest. It randomly happened, completely spontaneously, and people just joined in because they were like, oh, cool, things are on fire. Let me join in and set more things on fire. This is fun. Brooklyn's come to calm me down. You're shouting too much. Look at my little face. There is a widespread perception of two-tier policing. But you're also in a position Government, to give them the reality, Nigel. Yes, and, and the I, reality I, might be very different from their perception. No, you I, agree. I personally believe that, the, that we police different communities according to their racial backgrounds in different ways, and I want it to end. And the examples of that are? The examples of that are, for the third time... The Black Lives Matter protest? For the third time, the way that stop and search is implemented or frankly not implemented seriously saying that white people are stopped and searched more than brown and black people in the uk seriously what he's trying to say obviously for what they did in protesting on the streets yeah. there are people being arrested for whipping up racial hatred online for encouraging violence online do you worry that based on what you've said in the last few days you might get a knock on the door from the police no 
You don't think that's going to come your way? What, for asking the truth about the perpetrator of, an, of a serious crime? For suggesting that the police are lying without any evidence. I didn't say they lied. You've done that. That's the third time you've done that, and you are irresponsible and you, wrong you to do said, so. You, you are irresponsible. You Strike three. And You're wrong out. To I can give so. you the quote again, Nigel. The truth about Southport was being withheld from us. I didn't call them. I, I didn't say they were lying. So they're deliberately not giving people the truth. That's a very different thing to lying. So don't use that word again, please. You've done it three times and you're wrong. There are, right at the heart of this, some very, very fundamental concerns about societal breakdown in our country. And there is no doubt that we have to address issues like uncontrolled mass immigration and division of our communities. I, not tell people before those riots sparked who he was and where he came from. I remember reading that the day it happened. I mean, that that's just my memory, though. He's a minor, isn't he? So that's probably why they don't want to release details. They probably don't even want to release his name. But obviously the far right have taken advantage of this, like, void of information. He turned 18 this week. So they released more information. What was going on? in your brain genetically and environmentally for you to end up doing something like that is insane. It's interesting in itself, but when you come at it from a purely racist point of view, just othering the person, oh, well, they're not like me. I could be nothing like them because I wouldn't do anything like that. Well, clearly it's because they're from this country. It's a very simple, easy way to look at things, isn't it? What an idiot. Anyway, I'll, I'll end this segment on a shorter, wholesome video about the riots. After things started to deteriorate, after we saw the tragedy of the stabbing in Southport, our mosque in Liverpool, which is Britain's first mosque, was also threatened with protests. As we'd just seen on the TV, the violence against the, the mosque in Southport. And so people started to be scared. At seven o'clock, the counter protest started to, to arrive. About 400 to 500 people. It's one of the Nans against to, Nazis. To, to arrive, Hang on. About 400 to 500. Oh, <laughs> what a legend. What a legend. People. And then gradually the, the crowd on the other side of the road uh, started to, to slowly grow. At its peak, there were about 50 people and we decided to deal with those people who came to protest against us in a way which we hoped could open hearts and minds. We wanted to cook food. After 10 p.m., we got the food ready, which was cooked in the mosque kitchen. We walked over the road. Well, the, the first ones who I approached, they acted as if I was invisible and they couldn't see me. But I continued smiling. I continued being friendly. And then I went on to the next group until finally we, 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 we broke through to somebody's heart and he accepted the food. And then everybody started taking the food. And then we started discussing things with the... Uh... That's all it takes. <laughs> Literally just got to talk to each other. What, what is it again exactly that you're, you're protesting against? And nobody really had a clear answer for it. And it just goes to show how frustrated, how misguided. A lot of people are. This is what I'm saying. As soon as they talk to like an actual other working class person from a different community, they're a human being just like me. Oh shit. And I think that's far more powerful than anything that you could see like in the Daily Mail or the Sun. Empathy and understanding doesn't sell tabloids. <laughs> exactly. Hate sells tabloids. It really does. Anywhere that you go to in the UK, the tabloids are there. The headlines are there. Like even if you're not buying these newspapers, as soon as you walk into the shop, it's shoved into your face like I can't go into my local Sainsbury's without seeing some fucking stupid headline about how much we're supposed to hate Meghan Markle and it's all paid for by these fucking rich people it just festers and festers and festers and then they get a reason they get one single fucking reason to like lash out and then they do and then we realize oh shit the far right is a really massive problem in this country all the working class need to do is literally integrate with these communities and they'll realise that they're fucking human beings just like them who are under the same fucking boot. Well, after all of this, the anti-racism protests massively outnumbered. The city had been braced for trouble. So this part of Bristol is where a couple of immigration lawyers are based whose addresses have been leaked online. And there was a real fear there could be a far right process taking place here today. Why is this two pixels? What's going on here? Th this is on the BBC News website. Why is it 480p? But we've been here the last couple of hours. I'm not paying my licence fee for 480p. What's going but on? Instead, something very different has happened. <laughs> Thousands of anti-racism protesters, trade unionists, members of the local black and Asian community, students, took over the streets in what was broadly a good-natured evening, but one that sent a message. 
while there were colourful scenes in West London. Refugees are welcome here. Refugees are welcome here. Tonight, we'll be hoping that this could be a turning point in this disorder. Joe Inwood, BBC News. They all basically got scared away. That made it quite clear that they weren't really interested in peacefully protesting. They weren't interested in just like going out and chanting things. The police presence clearly scared them off that night. You were hoping to loot Lush. The ones in Newcastle today definitely wanted to fight, but they were too chicken shit to take out 2,000 people. About five far right people turned up in opposition to about two and a half thousand counter protests. It's clear that, that they're massively outnumbered which is nice to see. Oh man, Viking's hard.